welcome to Coaching for Creatives with Kirsten. My name is Kirsten Call. I'm a therapist trained life coach and a children's book author. Together, we'll get the drama out of our lives and onto the page. Let's get started. You are listening to episode 49, Radical Acceptance. Right before the pandemic hit, our family went to Panama. This was the first time we'd gone on a big trip without extended family. The last trip before our oldest child graduated from high school. We were so excited to visit some places where my husband lived as a kid and also explore the islands. When we landed in Panama, we were exhausted and excited at the same time. As we got on the water taxi, I couldn't help but look forward to the time we were going to spend sailing, exploring the islands, enjoying the time with only ourselves and the captain and a cook. So the water taxi was something I had never experienced before. Water sprayed into my face like a fire hose. And we hit waves in a way that made me wonder if I'd ever make it to our boat without any major injuries. (laughs) The longer we were on the water taxi, the more I wondered, are we in the right place? Did we take the wrong taxi? Will we ever find our boat or our captain? We passed boat after boat and realized none of them were the one we had booked. So the water taxi driver stopped. He radioed. He asked other drivers where our boat could possibly be. He asked other boat captains. Finally, we realized that our captain had double booked himself. Our boat was filled with other passengers. We had nowhere to go. At the time, it all felt sort of surreal. We'd never booked anything like this only to have it fall through before. The water taxi driver dropped us off on a nearby island and told us her captain would be there the next day for us. We were supposed to be on a boat with unlimited water and soda. We were supposed to be alone together in a comfortable-ish, if small, space. We could argue with reality all we wanted, but the reality was we were stranded on an island. There were people on the island who helped us. They gave us fish to eat with eyes that stared at us from the plate. There was a dilapidated basketball hoop. We could walk the periphery of the island in 10 minutes. We slept in open tent-like structure. There were bugs and things we didn't like about this trip. It was not what we expected. It was not what we had planned on, nor what we wanted. But this part of the trip ended up being the most memorable. We literally were stranded and it bonded us and connected us with each other in a way that a normal experience might not have done. In fact, we might have completely forgotten it. When we talk about Panama, this is what our kids remember. So what does this have to do with radical acceptance? I was forced to accept that I wasn't on a boat. I was on an island. We were not where we thought we were going to be. And arguing with reality wasn't going to change the reality of our situation. As humans, it's natural to resist and argue with reality. Resisting and arguing with reality does not help us. But radical acceptance does. It keeps pain from becoming suffering. Radical acceptance is fully accepting things as they are. Instead of ignoring, avoiding, or wishing the situation were different, it's a critical step in moving through difficult experiences to experience more meaning. Radical acceptance is not approval, but it's just completely and totally accepting with our mind, body, and spirit that we cannot currently change the present facts even if we do not like them. By choosing to radically accept the things that are out of our control, we can prevent ourselves from becoming stuck in unhappiness, bitterness, anger, and sadness. And we can stop our own suffering. So let's talk about some ways to practice radical acceptance in our lives. Number one, first, notice your thoughts. Are you thinking things like, this is not fair. I can't believe this is happening. Why is this happening to me? What did I do to deserve this? I am never going to get over this. I wish it were different. It shouldn't be this way. For example, in my island scenario, I was definitely thinking I shouldn't be stranded on an island. I should be on a boat. If we are thinking thoughts like this, we are fighting with reality. The reality for me was we were on an island instead of a boat. And there was nothing we could do about it. So the first step is to notice when you're thinking these sorts of thoughts. The second step is, Understand what you can and cannot control. Remind yourself of the things you can't change. It has happened. For me in the island scenario, I couldn't control the fact that our ship captain forgot about us and overbooked himself. 
We were on that island, whether we wanted to be or not. And we were going to be on that island until someone picked us up. (laughs) Number three, stop fighting with reality. Stuff happens or it's already happened. Should have, could have, I wish. None of those things change the reality of the situation. Again, stuck on an island and nothing we could do about it. Number four, pretend you already have accepted the hard thing and act like you have already accepted it. So this might include writing down what you would do if you did accept the facts of the situation and act accordingly. In my island experience, I could have pretended that my island adventure was exactly what I wanted. It would be what our family would remember most. Actually true, right? Number five, change your narrative. And this is something that I talk about on so many of these podcasts, but it's so transformative. This is the most effective and powerful part of radical acceptance. We accept what is, and then we tell a different story about it. Instead of feeling put out that I wasn't on a boat in my island experience, I could tell myself this was always the plan. I wanted an adventure on a small island where we were unsure of ourselves and how to proceed. That experience helped us know we could deal with uncertainty and still have fun. Number six, practice acceptance. Practice acceptance with not only your mind, but your body and spirit. This could include breathing, meditating, 90 second feelings, allowing and embracing all of it, all of the feelings. For me in the island scenario, I had to allow myself to feel disappointed, mad, frustrated. And then I had space to make the island experience an adventure. Just a few days ago, my kids mentioned the overnight island stay, and they did confirm that it was the most exciting and memorable part of our trip. Practicing radical acceptance can start with little things like when you hit traffic and you're going to be late to a meeting. You can go through all of these steps, acknowledging how you're fighting with reality because you should have been on time, admitting you cannot change that you're late, embracing the negative feelings associated with that, and then practicing radical acceptance. Practicing radical acceptance benefits us in so many ways. Number one, we become less judgmental of ourselves and others. Two, we stop labeling and quantifying people and things as good or bad. Number three, we notice the difference between facts and feelings like I'm late. I'm a terrible person because I'm late or I shouldn't be late. Those are feelings, not facts, right? Number four, we're more willing to be in the present moment, even if it's painful. Number five, we allow more space for all our emotions, good and bad, the comfortable and uncomfortable. Number six, we're more patient with ourselves and others. Number seven, we are more sure of ourselves and others. Here's some thoughts we can think to help us radically accept things we don't want to accept. I can't change this or I can't change the past. There's no point fighting with what ifs. It's okay to feel this way. Nothing has gone wrong here. I can accept myself the way I am in this moment. I have no control over other people. I can only control myself. People are going to be people. Believe me, if we could control them, we would have figured out a way, right? (laughs) Wishing things were different keeps us stuck. Radical acceptance is the kind of work that helps us move through the pain and avoid unnecessary suffering. So... As you find yourself arguing with reality, ask yourself these questions. Does wishing things were different help me? What do I want to feel? How can I set myself up for success? And here's my absolute favorite. Now what? Here's to a new year of radical acceptance. Until next time, keep smiling. If you like what you've heard, check out my Get Yourself Unstuck program. Go to kirstencall.com. That's K-I-R-S-T-I-N-E-C-A-L-L.com and schedule a free consultation today. Coaching for Creatives is produced by Kirsten Call. Music and audio engineering by James Call.